people have been out screaming for system change, not climate change. I think this is the beginning of uh, something very exciting, something powerful, something potentially a game changer. And it is the biggest challenge I think hum human race has ever faced, is to face down climate change and to begin to change the system that we live under. Um, I want to start, of course, by talking about the Climate Emergency Bill that has been before the Dáil for the last two years. Um, it's a very simple bill. What it does is it looks at the standard science that measures the level of carbon parts in the atmosphere at a dangerous level. It, if it goes before, beyond 350 parts per million, it's dangerous. It will cause overheating of the planet. And so the scientists have settled on that figure, 350 parts per million, as a way of measuring how bad we are at, uh, at dealing with our emissions. When I first put the bill to the Dáil in 2018, it was February 2018, and at that stage the measurement across the planet was 408 parts per million. The most recent measurement shows it's now at 416 parts per million. So instead of our emissions going down, they are rapidly rising. And yet we have known since the early 90s, the science and the fossil fuel industry, without putting their hands on their hearts and saying mea culpa, but they have known and accepted the science that fossil fuels are leading to a massive overheating of the planet. Um, and so the bill set out to say to the minister, if anyone applies to you, whether it's uh, ExxonMobil, the Chinese Oil Corporation, or Providence Resources, if they apply to you for a license to explore for gas or oil off our coast, you must refer to that international measurement. If it's above 350 parts per million, then you're obliged, according to this bill, if it was enacted as law, to refuse the permission to extract or explore any further. That's very fair. That's really fair. It's not dogmatic. It's not saying never again will you have a chance to explore, but it is saying you have a responsibility to the planet and the people who inhabit it. By a vast majority, the Dáil passed that bill. By a vast majority. And then we went through uh, legislative scrutiny where we brought over international witnesses and scientists from around the world. Uh, the government brought in their witnesses to say we need gas. It's a safe transition fuel. We have to keep exploring for gas. We put our arguments and brought our scientists to argue against that. Then the report was to be laid back before the Dáil. The committee refused to do it, or at least the chairperson refused to do it. We then used our next opportunity to put a motion to the Dáil to say, let it go. Let it pass to committee stage and become uh, on, on the tracks to become law. Again, the vast majority of TDs in the Dáil voted for that to happen. We were delighted with the support we got on the streets by, from the movement right across the country and indeed across the world for this effort. And then, about six months after we had got past that stage and were ready to go into committee, they blocked it by using a silly mechanism, anti-democratic mechanism called the money message. They said there would be too much... Uh, attached expenses for legal fees and advice, you know, nonsense stuff. When you see the overspend on the National Children's Hospital, which is increasing, and yesterday we found out that they spent 17 million in one year on consultancy fees alone, and over 1 million in PR jobs for the National Children's Hospital. This bill would not even have cost a fraction of that, and they refused to allow it go ahead. So we need to keep the voices on the street saying, keep it in the ground, let the bill go, let it pass, and we will keep at them uh, inside there in the Dáil. But in a way... And only this week, um, a, a left-wing member of the Icelandic Parliament who came over to visit us copied the bill and has put it before the Icelandic Parliament. Four other countries have used this method to block the expiration of the budget last year, and we'd be pushing for it in the budget on the 8th of October, is to instigate free public transport across, across the country. And we've got a cost on it. And interestingly, it's less than a billion. It's about 650 million of an increase to keep transport free at the level we have it now. Isn't that very interesting? To do that, they could do it overnight with a fraction of the overspend on the children's hospital. They could do it overnight with a fraction of what they're spending or, or, or refusing to take from the apple tax. 14.3 
billion could be ours in the morning if we pulled our lawyers back from Europe and stopped the silly opposition to the apple tax which belongs to it, which we could use to implement many of these measures. There's another measure we got passed at, at the Climate Action Committee, which is one of the priority measures that we got introduced, and that was before they increase carbon tax on ordinary people, that they must conduct a national fuel poverty survey that was passed and it was argued over for days and nights. Eventually Fianna Fáil and all the establishment bought into it except Fianna Gael. We got it passed. It's the third priority measure in the Climate Action Plan and not a single thing has been done about it. That survey was supposed to have been completed by the end of June. It's not rocket science. People like Mabs and the Vincent de Paul do these surveys all the time. And you would be shocked by the level of fuel poverty that exists out there. And by, by fuel poverty, I mean the ability of people to change their lifestyle, to retrofit their homes, to use different fuel, to stop turning on the gas when they need to be warm, to be able to get rid of the old diesel car that's on the farm or the tractor and to buy something uh, that's electrically run. They don't have it. Fuel poverty is a big issue in this country and putting a carbon tax on ordinary people is punitive and will not help to win the vast majority of the population to the idea that we can do something about climate change. What do we do instead? We argue for a profit or a tax on the profits of the fossil fuel industry, a tax on the profits of the aviation industry. Ryanair alone is the 10th biggest air polluter in Europe. Now, you would say to me, well, they'll put up the cost of flights, wouldn't they? Well, here's the thing. We're arguing for a tax on the profits of the companies, fossil fuel and the aviation companies, and it is possible if that uh, think tank in there, run by the Minister for Social or P Expenditure and Money, Pascal Donoghue, if that think tank can come up with mechanisms to allow corporations not to pay taxes, to pay absolutely no tax, hence the Apple case, then they can come up with mechanisms to tax their profits and stop them passing the cost on to ordinary people. It can be done, they just refuse to do it. And it goes back to the argument Owen made. Why do they refuse to do it? Because they're addicted to profit. They see no other way of running society except by the wheels of profit. If something doesn't make a profit, it's not worthwhile. Is it worthwhile retrofitting the homes of old people in Crumlin who maybe have five or more a week that doesn't allow them to be entitled to the fuel allowance. So therefore, when they apply for an SEAI grant, they get the form back saying, you're not eligible to apply to get your attic lagged or your home retrofitted. A five or a week more than poverty, and they throw loads of people under the bus in, in terms of that. Is that worthwhile? No. Yes. Should we do it? Yes. Will they do it? No. And why they won't do it is because of that addiction to profit and the idea that they will take from the poor in order to enhance the rich. I've got a, an extraordinary figure here. And I'm not arguing that we all have to be poor <coughs> to fall into this category. But there's an extraordinary figure here that says that 440 thousand euro is the average wealth of the average of, of every family in this country in other words if you took the national wealth and divided it up to every family each family would be worth about 440 thousand euro in wealth but that's not the case probably all of you looking at me are nowhere near that wealthy so what it says to us is that wealth is held in the hands of a tiny few the one percent that dominate this government, the 1% that lobby them, that say don't let Breed Smith's bills pass, the 1% that lobby them that say you must put on a carbon tax, the 1% that are loaded from the very top and who don't give a tuppenny damn about the planet or the people on it or the species that are being murdered as a result. We have to stand up to them. We are many and they are few. Finally, there's a lot of things on our website that we do see as practical alternatives that could be done immediately. As well as having free public transport, we can also show that by putting an extra 500 electric buses on the road straight away, it would only cost 350 million. That would have an amazing contribution to the air quality in this country. I cycled in from Ballyfermot this morning along the Keys and I nearly choked with the amount of uh, air pollution that was around me. And that, that happens every day to everybody who cycles in this country. Two of the worst areas for air pollution are Ballyfermot and Drumna. The air quality 
has been declared there to be the worst in the country. The reason for it is because of the traffic, the over-concentration of cars and diesel on our roads. We absolutely need that public transport. Instead of what Richard Bruton proposes, is putting another million AV cars on the street, electric cars on the streets. We need the public transport. We need it frequent. We need it free. And that could really change our lives. We need to retrofit homes. We need to rethink what we're doing with forestry. At the moment, they're planning on, on, on taking more land and planting millions of Sitka spruce trees. Sitka spruce are unhealthy for the ecology. Flowers can't grow, bees can't live, birds can't live in it. It is a, a huge cash crop, it yields profits quickly, but it has no long-term stability or, or sustainability for this country. We want to see native hardwood planted in their millions across, uh, across the country, and that is absolutely doable. Another thing that is absolutely doable, because I want to shut up, another thing that, that is absolutely doable in terms of immediate action, is the question of building sufficient, safe uh, and, and, and sustainable housing. Now I heard this morning Google are proposing to build housing for their workers to help them help us out of the crisis. Well, I can tell you, if I worked for Google and I lived in their home, I'd be afraid of my life if in case I got sacked, because not only would I get sacked, I'd lose my house, I'd be afraid to open my mouth in case I'd also lose my home and my job. And I just think that's irresponsible of the government to be relying on the private market to deal with the housing crisis. It is absolutely possible, absolutely possible, for not a huge amount of investment to house everybody in decent, affordable, well, if they want to buy it, that is affordable, but affordable to rent, decent accommodation that is uh, sustainable. Um, those are a few ideas. If you check out our website, there's loads more. But I look forward to the discussion. And keep it in the ground has to be the slogan of this movement. No fracked gas. Thanks a million, Breed. Fighting words, as ever there are, fighting words. So, uh, Breed's made a